Hello Tippets! We're going to look today at this new game in the Tales and Games series called The Pied Piper. As you can see, it looks like a book because it's based on a story which is in a book of the Pied Piper. The Pied Piper was the guy that came to Hamlin to help the town rid it of all its rats which infested the place. And they used to play a little tune, much like this. No, it wasn't that one. So as normal, Purple Brain have given us this book-like kind of box. And as you can see when it opens up, you have in the inlay here, you have the layout of the table, how the game is set up. You have this book, which is a short little story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin. And then you have this uh, rules uh, book, which is very short and very concise. And then you have all your components stored nicely inside. The game plays from two to five players, and each player will choose a house and a infestation track to mark the progress of a rat in their house. No one that one either. Ugh. Here's a rough setup for a four player game. You place the house in front of you with the track at the bottom of your house, and then you take a rat and you place a rat in between each of the houses, like Sue. You choose a starting player and the starting player gets an extra rat and the Pied Piper placed on their left hand side, like Sue. Each of the six rats has a different colour tail. And each rat has its own character card. There's a small deck of cards which is the character cards and they contain three of each of the racked colours and three of the Pied Piper. If you're playing with less than five players you will have to remove the coloured rats which are not being used in the game. You place this deck in the middle of the table and you reveal the top four cards like so. There's also a deck of action cards. Each player will receive four of these at random. No. And then the game begins. The first player will look at their hand of cards and choose one and place it under one of the characters. Their turn ends and they draw a, another action card and place that in their hand. And then the play passes to the right. Yes, the right, as indicated on the houses. The second player looks at their hand of cards and picks two cards to play under two different characters. So for example, I play the advanced one on the yellow and I'm going to play the plus one on the yellow there. If after placing your two cards, one of the characters has two cards on them, that character then activates. In this case, the yellow rat will advance one moving through one house and making the tracker move up one on that house and this plus one means that it moves one more past this house and making this tracker go like that. Then you remove these cards and you remove the character and replace it with a new one. You then take two more cards and add them to your hand so you've got four at the end of your turn and then play passes to the next player. Here's some more examples. The green rat will advance and advance. So here is the green rat. He'll advance through this house, making this tracker go up, and advance through this house, making this tracker go up. The yellow rat here can do either one of two things. It can either advance twice and then go back one, or go back one and advance twice. So in this case, I'm going to show you what advance twice and go back one does. The yellow rat advances two, goes through this house and through this house, which raises the track once here and once here. But then it goes back one, which means it goes through this house again, and that track raises again. The plus one means plus one action. Okay, so in the case of the red rat, it will move forward twice and then one extra. So he would move through one, two, and one extra. Or if he was reversing, he'd go back one, and back another. 
A drain card means that the rats actually go underneath your house, which means that the level of the rat infestation does not move up. So the purple rat can either go through a house and under a house, or under a house and through a house, depending on where you are. So we could go under here, and then go through there, which would raise that tracker up. The melody card affects all the characters in the same location as the active character. So the red here would be this red rat, this yellow rat, and the Pied Piper. They would all move forward one. So in the case, these two rats would go through that house, which would raise the bar one two times, and also the Pied Piper would go through the house. But his special power is he reduces the infestation by one. Nah. If at any point during the game a deck of cards runs out, you take the discard and then you shuffle them and then start drawing from that new deck. The game will continue until there are two players left. At that point, you will see who has the lowest infestation rate. That player is the winner. If it's a draw, you look and see how many players have been eliminated by those players. And then the player who's eliminated the most is the winner. Now in a two-player variant, that would be a little bit different because otherwise the game would end as soon as it started because it ends when there's two players left. But no, in a two-player variant, you set up the table as if you're playing four players, but you have two dummy players either side of you. The game then continues as normal and it's just a case of elimination. So that's the two-player variant. <laughs> No, no, wouldn't that either? So, is this a game worth picking up? Hmm, well, I can tell you that the Pied Piper is a book game that every family will be enticed into playing. Let's talk about the components. The box is wonderful, it looks cute, the artwork is really nice, everything is held nicely into the box, um, all the components are solid, everything is perfect. The theme and the mechanics mesh together really, really well, and this game is a, a delight to play. The game doesn't just come with a, a very well explained rule book with diagrams and examples, it also comes with the storybook of the, the, the Pied Piper, so if you don't know the story, it's something you can tell your children. Now, just because it's a children's game doesn't mean that you can play it solely with children. This game plays really well with groups of adults, as you're being nasty to each other, because it's a really take that kind of game. And with groups of children, they have a good laugh, although there may be the occasional tear as someone gets eliminated from the game. Yes, player elimination is in this game, and it doesn't hamper the game, because the game it normally runs between 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the amount of players. And that means that you're not sitting out that too long, and, and you're, you're kind of like spurring on your other players. Where, again, where this is a take that game, people can be really nasty to you and they could just primarily pick on you, but that doesn't really happen a lot. There is the luck of the draw, of course, but there is actually two decks of cards, so you kind of evens itself out. You may not have a good hand of cards in your hand, but there might be some good cards in the middle which you can do damage to other players to. If you don't like chaos, carnage and elimination, this game might not appeal to you. Because of its quick play nature, you'll probably play this game two or three times in a row. Because it is fun and it's, it's amusing when you eliminate people when people eliminate you. Another nice little bonus is if you own the three pigs, it comes with a bonus card for that game. So you can play it with that. But for me, it is a super family fun game. I'd give it an 8.8. .8. So there you have it. You don't have to own every single game that's out there. Just own some of the good ones. It's really impossible to come up with a good ending. Ah! It's not that one either. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.